Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have a, another uh, Marine ECM test. Uh, this time is an MFE4 for Marduk uh, Bitsaya. Uh, he sent me these two computers. Uh, one is the server, which is the one I have right now on the bench. And I have the port right here, which is the one with the concern. So he said that the port, these are uh, 2002 Silverton 330 Sport Bridge. Uh, with a Crusader engine, 8.1 liters twin engine, right? So we have two computers, the uh, one with the numbers at the end, 280049, uh, sometimes too close, it's no good for this one, is the port, and that is the bad ACM, and uh, sometimes it's hard to start, and it has no tack, which I was able to reproduce. The starboard, on the other hand, is a, new, is a good working computer, and I have it open because I was uh, doing some tests to try to confirm the one on the port side, and that one is A60444. That is a good computer, and it, yes, it runs really good. So tests that I want to show here, and hopefully, yes, you can see that in there. So uh, I have right now uh, pin on j114 so j2 is where the ear on the computer is and j1 is on the other side they're both uh, 32 connector pins uh, or 30 pin 32 pin connectors sorry mm -hmm. all right so what i have is um in j114 i have one side of a multimeter on continuity and then i can touch in here oh, let me put the bip and hopefully you can see or hear the beeping and also as it shows zero that means it's dead sure right so going inside the computer i'm going to use the microscope and i'm just going to keep the camera there i can see the okay j114 is here again the beeping uh give me one second because the nice thing about this meter is I can detach the face so we can see that in there. So, all right, so I'm going to touch. Um, I'm going to try to get off the way so you guys can see what I'm doing or the results. So you can see how it's beeping and we have a dead short right there. So this is the circuit. Um, I can go down further inside the computer and that same pad reaches here which is again if i touch we can hear and you can see it says like two ohms and that is okay i mean it, it's a pad right but that is that is good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the sound and now we are going to be reading ohms right so this capacitor in here so if we get to the beginning of the signal so we have the jumper and then it goes to this capacitor which i touch first Again, we can see the result in there. We got 0 .0 0 0.3 ohms of resistance. That's a dead shore, right? This path in here is ground. If I touch here and we read there, we have 2.088 million ohms. This is the known good computer. And I'm going to connect it now to the diacom and run it so you can see it running. All right, so let me unplug this from here because we're going to do the same test on both computers but i want to show what one does and also that you can see that that is indeed the actual um tachometer signal so this is j2 let me plug this and i'll be right back all right I connect to the computer i have a specific wire and as you can see it says j114 tac I have the oscilloscope ready to go. We want to turn the computer on and run it. So we're kind of like an idol. Um, we have, uh, I have Mark in here, blue channel as a fuel pump, green as one of the EST signals, that is a zero to five volts. The red is one of the injectors and the yellow is the tack. So we can see the signal right there. So if I now remove that from here, which, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. Sorry for my fingers right to my camera, but I'm doing this with my phone. So let me get this out of out of the camera so I can plug this in here. 
So now carefully, let me put my glasses because 52, I need more uh, help to see close. But yeah, so if I touch here, right here, right at this capacitor, right there, right? We will see the same RPM signal. I'm removing the connection and you can see that there is nothing now. Well, it takes a little to update the signals because I have too many on the screen, but so that is there. And if I go right here, the same motor connection or pad that I show you, we have the same right there. So this is the known good computer. And now we know the resistance and where the signal goes from here jumps in instantly over to the microprocessor. And that's where his other computer is not repairable. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to switch the computers. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is I got a mark as a starboard and the one that we're going to test as port. So we will see that there. So let me swap the computers and do the test with the other computer. All right, for the sake of the video, I got everything connected and ready to go. Again, this is the port side. So it's no confusion that this is another computer. Um, I have this ready to go here. Let me actually get the multimeter out of the uh, meter case, let's say. Remember, this is, uh, I can move it. Yeah, that's, that should work good. All right, so let's put the, the bip and make sure it bips. Yes. All right, so again, if I go here, you will notice that I have done some work in here because this computer has a dead short on this. But if I touch here, we got continuity. But the problem is even with that capacitor removed and um let me switch hands with the test leads so you guys can see better not sure if this has uh would be nice to have um kind of like a little bit of a leg so you can put them in an angle because maybe that's better okay so if i touch here where the capacitor used to be we got a dead short zero that's fine that's if the way it should be but now i'm touching the ground pad and we got four ohms of resistance and it's beeping that's a dead short so that should not be there so now let's remove the um continuity test and let's do a num reading remember we got two million ohms on the other one right but in this one we got 4.2 ohms to ground uh, come on focus this camera with i'm not sure if it's the camera or the software that i'm using but you guys can see i can touch in here same thing is the same ground path 4.2 ohms that's a direct short to ground and this is a problem because i was trying to see if i follow the path down to and see if i find the short but actually the whole pad is good. The problem might be under the microprocessor. And that would I consider all oh, that. I will also consider probably his, uh, part of his problems because he also mentioned that this side computer or this side engine is hard to start sometimes. And no doubt about it. I mean, if you have part of the microprocessor already shorted, um, who else or what else can be shorted? We don't know. So I'm going to just keep this one here and do the connections either way this computer needs repair. But what I want to do is connect and this is what I want to show you how simple and how fast I can do my tests even with one hand in a computer that is open or it just comes here. So I'm going to plug since we already know that we have the same path over, uh, over here to the tachometer. If I can plug this with one hand. Come on, I want to keep it all in one capture. All right, so we got the tachometer over to the yellow line on my uh, picoscope. Let's run the computer and it runs. At least in here, yes, we can see that we got 2.6 inject, uh, in injector time. We got the coils. This is an eight, eight coil uh, computer, it's an 8.1. And we got the fuel pump relay on. Uh, but if we see the signals which are populated, let me move that um, uh, trigger because now trigger is in channel A, but it's nothing in there because it's just the fuel pump. So let's trigger on the C channel. 
green channel and then let's move that to a spot where it can pick up one of those uh, humps or signals from one of the ESTs. We can see the injector, but again, no tachometer. And this is not repairable. So Marduk, I have bad news in this module, even though it's running, but uh, again, it might run here on a simulation, not enough on the boat, especially when you stress it more. I can definitely see it running and I have RPMs and if I connect the diacom, which I should probably have, no, it's not running. Uh, let me just connect, which is, it's, it's established connection, no problem. I always uh, show this, so maybe one, I connected, sorry, maybe one and four, it will detect the module and then mode one and then connect. Disregard the false, because I have EST6 uh, has a short in F, sorry, H and G. Those are not connected to my simulator. And I leave those on purpose to see if the computer logic is actually good or not. This computer has, uh, let me see how many hours, because wrong time. Yeah, it looks, this looks like this computer is showing not many hours as far as running time. Let me see if I see hours, 24 hours, engine hours, 24.6. You see right there, right here. Engine hours, 20, 24.6. And uh, calibration is 0411. It's the same as in the Star Wars. And I have those two saved so I can open the Star Wars. Remember, we're on the port. I always save the information for everything that I'm working on. So let me just go up because that's somebody else's. So we're going to Mephi 4, customer report. And then um, 8.1, where are you? 8.1. So the Star Wars, I'm going to open the history. And the Star Wars has 829 hours. I'm going to sum a little bit, a little more in here, but yeah, I'm going to select that so you guys can see it good in blue. And it says engine hours 829.9. So this computer, this poor computer has definitely had taken a, a, a big dump or hit electrically because that should not be, I mean, I think these are the original computers. So let me open the history, the same thing that we did on the other one. And let's select the hours, and then we have on this one only 24.4, and that is the port. So, as you see, I check both uh, calibration. As I said, the calibration check zoom is not giving any errors. So again, four zero four eleven. That's port. If I go to the starboard, the calibration check zoom is still the same, zero four eleven. So. Something took this computer down so much that even erased the hours, and we can definitely see that in there. But yeah, it's nothing I can do with this computer. It's 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 a it's a problem that this computer uh, have, which is yes, I can replace lots of components, but a lot of these components on these computers are crystal. It's a this is a hybrid board. It's a hybrid ceramic board. So a lot of the uh, board is printed and that's why you know how they do it in some of the pads I can fix like you know put jumpers I can replace most of these components that you uh, components that you can see are surface mount but these crystal ones and I, why do I say crystal not a crystal oscillator they're made out of crystal material so yes this one this one this one you can see the shiny is not a, a surface mount it's a printed and then solder it because uh, they have the pads and they solder this and they put an epoxy in there there is no no numbers there is no way to get those uh, to replace and I have removed them and uh, look for all over the place and I could not find it it would take a special machine to actually resolder those because that is how they do it on the factory and, and I can show you the process of soldering all the components in here but we will not be able to do so that's why I deem when I have a component like that uh, I deem the, the, the module as not repairable and that is the case this time all right guys thank you so much for visiting the channel let me uh, say at least 
Hi to everybody. Today is my birthday. Um, this is February 4, uh, 2024, and I'm becoming uh, 52. So thank you so much for all of you that had joined the channel and they have followed me for a very long time. I'm really honored to have you all follow me and put in all those comments that really make me go even further, you know, try to share knowledge, try to help others. And as you can see, even when I'm working on a computer, then it's not repairable. I try to show how do I, uh, you know, perform the test? Why do I condemn these computers as not repairable? This is not a computer that can be repaired with software or anything. This is a no good computer is, is damaged and it's nothing you can do. So the only thing that I will recommend to Marduk is to try to uh, source a computer with the same calibration and then install it on the engine, but it's, and make sure that whatever chore it was or is on the boat that can, is repaired before it plug another computer because otherwise it's going to damage a new computer, right? All right, guys, thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.